Another big Chinese rocket launched to space in July, and no one knows where or when it will return. It will be a repeat of two previous launches of the same rocket, the Long March 5B, which is one of the biggest in operation by China today. The 10-story, 23-ton rocket booster will be tracked by space debris experts for roughly a week after launch as wisps of air friction slowly tug it back down. Some expert thinks that the chances of the rocket to striking someone on Earth is low, but it is substantially more than what many space specialists consider acceptable. In today's episode, we're looking for an answer to, does China have the safest and most successful space program? This is Race to Space. If you like watching content regarding China's space program, consider subscribing. The powerful rocket was developed with the sole purpose of putting components of China's Tiangong space station into orbit. The most recent flight successfully lifted Wenshan's Space Lab module that will increase the space station's capacity for conducting scientific research. Additionally, it will offer three extra sleeping areas for astronauts, as well as an additional airlock for them to use when they go on spacewalks. The completion and continued operation of the space station are characterized as being essential to China's national prestige in state-controlled media. Nevertheless, the nation's image has suffered significant setbacks as a result of prior launches of the rocket. During the initial launch of the Long March 5B in the year 2020, the rocket had a re-entry over West Africa. Debris from the booster caused damage to settlements in the nation of Ivory Coast, but no injuries were reported. The rocket from the second launch, which took place in 2021 and was near the Maldives, fell into the Indian Ocean and sank without causing any harm. In spite of this, Bill Nelson, the administrator of NASA, released a statement in which he criticized the Chinese. He stated, It is very evident that China is not meeting acceptable norms in reference to their space trash. China responded strongly and publicly to the criticism by denying its validity. A senior official at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs named Hua Chunying leveled the accusation of hype at the United States. In response of the accusation, Ms. Hua stated, Over the last several days, the United States and a few other nations have been hyping up the landing of the Chinese rocket debris. She also stated that, to date, no damage has been recorded that was caused by the landing debris. According to the accounts, not a single event has occurred since the launch of the first man-made satellite more than 60 years ago in which a piece of debris hit someone. The probability of such an event happening is estimated by specialists in the United States to be less than one in a billion. The Chinese government places a high premium on space exploration, and they view each significant launch as an opportunity to add to their growing space dominance. According to Dr. Namrata Gaswani, author of Scramble for the Skies, China's level of technological advancement in its space program has now overtaken that of Russia. When compared to Russia's space program, China is further ahead in terms of its lunar and Mars programs as well as its military space organization. China has accomplished several firsts in space exploration, including landing a rover on the far side of the moon, collecting lunar rock and bringing it back to Earth for scientific research, and landing and operating a rover on Mars. The United States of America is the only other nation in the world to have achieved that particular success. Joan Johnson Fries, a professor at the United States Naval War College and the former chair of the Department of National Security Affairs, stated that China is not doing anything in space that the United States has not already done, nor has it done anything that the United States has not done in space. However, the United States is quite concerned about the fact that it is approaching technological parity. In comparison to the American space program, she described the Chinese one as being more like a tortoise than a hare, despite the fact that the turtle has sped up substantially in recent years. As of the month of April this year, China had successfully completed a total of six missions toward the assembly of the space station. There has been a total of three crews of astronauts who have lived aboard the station, one of which being the crew that has moved into the Wenshan module. The Wenshan spacecraft was successfully positioned on the orbital path that had been intended by the rocket booster around 15 minutes after the launch. It took nearly 13 hours after launch for the craft to make contact with the Tianhe space station module. There has been no evidence presented by the Chinese space agency to suggest that any modifications have been made to the rocket. 
If the architecture of the rocket has not been changed, there will be no thrusters directing its fall, and the booster's engines will not be able to be restarted. The final rain of debris, of which a few tons of metal are anticipated to survive all the way to the surface, could occur anywhere along the path that the booster travels, which travels as far north as 41.5 degrees north latitude and as far south as 41.5 degrees south latitude. In addition, a few tons of metal are expected to survive all the way to the surface. Los Angeles, New York, Cairo, and Sydney, Australia are some of the cities that the booster will travel over, but Chicago and Rome, both of which are located a little further north of the orbital trajectories, will not be in danger. However, the booster will pass over Los Angeles, New York, and Cairo. It can be difficult to accurately estimate where a falling rocket stage will land using scientific methods. This phenomenon causes the pace of descent to either speed up or slow down, depending on how strongly the sun is shining on a specific day. The Earth's atmosphere blows up and deflates based on how strongly the sun is shining on that particular day. In the event that the computation is wrong by half an hour, the falling debris will have already gone one-third of the way around to the Earth. The Wenshan module, which is longer than 15 meters, more than 50 feet, will be propelled into orbit by the center booster stage of the Long March 5B. This was designed to happen. This indicates that the booster will also make it into orbit. This is in contrast to most rockets, in which the lower stages normally fall back to Earth shortly after launch. Upper stages that reach orbit typically restart their engines after releasing their cargoes in order to steer themselves toward re-entry over in an uninhabited region, such as the middle of the ocean. There are times when malfunctions lead to undesired and uncontrolled re-entry, such as the second stage of a SpaceX rocket that crashed over the state of Washington in the year 2021. However, the Falcon 9 stage weighed just around 4 tons and was far less likely to result in property damage or personal injury. When it comes to reintroducing huge objects into the atmosphere, the United States and NASA have not always exercised the same level of caution as they do now. In 1979, the first American space station, Skylab, broke apart in orbit and crashed to Earth. Large fragments of the station were found in Western Australia. NASA never paid a $400 fine for littering. After the upper when the Atmosphere Research Satellites, commonly known as UARS, mission was over in 2005, NASA did not have any plans to get rid of the satellite. Six years later, when the dead satellite, which was about the size of a city bus, was heading toward an uncontrolled re-entry, NASA determined that there was a 1 in 3200 risk that a person might be hurt. It finally broke apart and crashed into the Pacific Ocean. According to Ted Muehlhaupt, a debris specialist, typically between 20 and 40 percent of a rocket or satellite will survive re-entry. This would indicate that between 10,000 and 20,000 pounds of the Long March 5B rocket may potentially impact the surface of the Earth. According to Mr. Muehlhaupt, the United States and a few other countries avoid allowing uncontrolled re-entries of space debris if there is a possibility that a person on the ground may be injured with a probability that is higher than 1 in 10,000. To this day, there is no record of anyone being injured as a result of falling space debris that was created by humans. Mr. Muehlhaupt stated that the probability of 1 in 10,000 being corrected is fairly arbitrary. It's generally agreed upon, but as of late, there has been a growing worry that when a large number of things re-enter the building, the cumulative effect of all of them might result in somebody getting harmed. According to Marlon Sorge, executive director of the Center for Orbital and Reentry Debris Studies at Aerospace Corporation, it's quite normal practice to drop them in the water when the risk is higher. By doing it this way, you can rest assured that you won't run into anyone. Zhu Yang Song, a former officer at the China National Space Administration, made a reference to the tragedy in Ivory Coast in 2020 during a pre-launch show that was aired on CGTN, a Chinese state-run television network. Since that time, he stated that we enhanced our technology in order to land the rocket stage in an area devoid of people. Nevertheless, he did not provide any further details. To conclude, we can say that China still needs to work more on their safety standards to be called the safest space agency in the world, and so does the United States.